Thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Hey, what's up guys? So as some of you know, Matthias, who's a really popular creator here on YouTube, he runs some seriously impressive channels. He recently did a video where he featured some up and coming creators, and one of those happened to be me, and we were super thankful for that. He was just showing off some channels that he thought deserved some love. And we got like 5,000 subscribers from it, and probably the subscribers are still coming in from that to this day. And we were just so thankful for that, and we really liked that, and we ended up connecting, and we were talking, and I decided that I wanted to make him a ring, something that would kind of match his whole branding and himself as a person. So we worked together to pick out a design for him. So first of all, I think we should figure out what kind of use you want to get out of this ring, whether you want to use it like every day, or if it's just something you want to put on a shelf as something that's just kind of cool memorabilia. For me, uh, like I want, I want the ring to be like about something significant, something that I care about, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's see. Significant. Do you want it to be more like a subtle thing? I can do a lot of like I do glow rings all the time. Yeah, I'm like, like I'm like traditional, right? Like, okay. I'm a fan of Lord of the Rings. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. I, I like that yellow gold. Okay. Yeah. I I think I can come up with some some good mock-ups. Maybe do some photoshopping. Send you some mock-ups. Go from there. Sound good? All right. Sweet. Good, good talking with you. So we're gonna have yellow gold on the outside, but on the inside, I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to be using resin to match his Doper Nope color logos. So we're gonna be going with that kind of aqua blue and as well as that like really fluorescent, almost pink reddish color. So we're gonna be using these dyes to try to match that the best we can. And then we've also got glow powders here. And so I'm really excited to get into this and obviously I'm super excited to hand it over to Matthias. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got all of my resin mixing materials out. Obviously, I've got the resin A and B side, and then we've got the color dyes right here. And so before I add any glow, that's right here, I'm just going to do some color samples, and so I'm going to do a bunch here. The goal is going to be to match the colors in the logo. So I've got the logo pulled up on my phone. You can see the D is more of an aqua color, so I'm going to be mixing blue and green. And these are really rich dyes that are going to leave us with a really dark color. And so I'm going to be adding in some white, which will make it more opaque and will also give us the lighter color that we need to go for. And then after I'm done doing the samples for that, figure out the right formula, we're going to switch over and go for the pinkish red color. Then after we get the aqua color spot on, I'm going to switch over and we're going to work on getting this kind of fuchsia color right. So I've got red dye here as well as white. We might have to mix in a couple of other colors. We'll just see how that goes. All right, so I've done a few color samples. I did this first one, the second one, and the third one here, obviously. The idea is that they're supposed to get lighter as I went on, but then on this third one, I accidentally added a little too much green to it, and so that's why I just X'd it all out. But after looking at them, I think number one matches the logo best, and so we're gonna go with that. Now, let's go ahead and move on and try to match the pink in the logo, or the just bright red. So I'm going to be using the red dye for that as well as mixing in white to make it lighter and we'll go from there. So I just finished up doing a bunch of color samples for the red. And you can see when these overflow, that's just because I have too much pigment in the resin for the volume that I'm doing. When we do a larger batch, it's going to have less pigment concentration. And the reason that I'm adding so much is just because it's easier to mix with the color and get changes with it. And so the overflowing of it is, yeah, it's just a byproduct of that. That won't be an issue with our final product. But anyways, I think the colors that I like most are six and eight, and I don't think either of them are really spot on in terms of color. I think six is a more accurate color compared to the logo, and eight is a more vibrant color that matches the vibrancy of the logo. And I think it also goes really well with our uh, blue that we're going to use. So 
I've got the logo right here. You can kind of compare that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the two recipes that I did with six and eight to get a new one. We'll call that nine, obviously. And if I like that one, we'll go with that. If not, I think we'll revert and go back with eight. All right, so I've got all the formulas figured out exactly how I want them. We're ready to do the real thing and add the actual glow powders. This one right here is red glow powder. This is aqua glow powder. We're gonna add red to red, aqua to aqua, obviously. And then unlike the samples that we did, we want this to be completely bubble free. So we're going to be using a vacuum chamber to get rid of like 99.9% .9 of the bubbles. And then the pressure pot to get rid of any remaining bubbles. That'll just crush them. And I'll just weigh out my resins, mix in everything, and we'll go from there. Now while I'm mixing the resin, I wanted to take a minute and tell you about Audible, which is today's sponsor. So Audible is a great company, and I'm sure you've heard about them before, but I wanted to share with my audience specifically the reason why I like Audible. So the reason I personally use Audible is because they have a fantastic selection of audiobooks that I can listen to while I'm doing something else. So you guys know me, I'm always in the shop, I'm always working on a project, so I usually don't have time to sit down and visually read a book. But I'm almost always able to pop in a pair of earbuds and listen to an audiobook. So it's a new year, and every January, I'm usually inspired to try to start something new. So during January, in this first part of February, I've been listening to a book called How to Think Like a Great Graphic Designer. So I'm not a graphic designer, but I do design rings for a living. So I thought this book would be the perfect fit for me as someone who's always trying to come up with new ideas and to create things that are visually appealing. So the book is a series of interviews that the author does with 19 of the world's greatest graphic designers. So they share how they think, how they connect with others, how they come up with ideas. So there's just a lot of really good insight in there that I'm able to take and apply to my own life and try to apply it towards some of the ring designs that I do. And finally, I wanted to tell you about Audible Originals. And to put it simply, Audible Originals are exclusive audio titles that are created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as theater, journalism, literature, and more. So Audible's given me a custom URL and offer for my viewers. So you'll get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. And you just need to visit audible.com slash Patrick Adair. Or you can text Patrick Adair to 500-500. Once again, that's audible.com slash Patrick Adair. Or text Patrick Adair to 500-500. So thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring today's video. And thank you, the audience, for listening. Now let's get back to the ring making. So I left the resin to cure in my pressure pot overnight. And as you can see, there are no bubbles in this. So I'm super happy with the way that it turned out. And I ended up getting the gold shell for the ring in the mail the same day. So it actually worked out perfectly. So you can see we've got all of the components we need. I've even got my mock-up that I did in Photoshop shown here. So this is what we're going to shoot for. And now we just got to do the rest of the making and we'll have it finished. So my first step here was pretty straightforward. I just needed to trim down my blue resin rod in order to get it to fit perfectly with the golden outer shell for it. But the next part is what was trickier. So I got it to fit and I glued it all in place and it was a really nice fit. There's no large seam or anything like that. But then what I needed to figure out was how do I precisely cut halfway through the blue resin to make room for the fuchsia color. So obviously I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. So I took my calipers, I measured the overall width of the ring and it came out to be just barely over eight millimeters. And so I took half of that and that turned out to be, as you can see, just barely over four millimeters. And then I trimmed down the blue resin until I was getting a reading very close to that. And I just kept going and zeroing it in because I, you really don't wanna go too far. You can't go back when you're subtracting material from it. So I just went very carefully. I went less than a 10th of a millimeter at a time until I got it to the exact dimension that I needed. And then that's when I cut all the way through the rest of the blue material to get it ready to mate with the fuchsia.
Next, I cut the fuchsia resin and got it to fit nicely within the gold sleeve. Then I just glued it in place using the exact same method, cut it off, trimmed it up, and from here it's just finishing steps that I need to do. So the sanding on this was really standard, I just got my different grits of sandpaper and I rounded out the edges so it would be comfortable to wear. And then I went through all the different grits all the way up to a really fine grit that gives it a nice finish. And then I actually used a plastic polish for this to give it a really nice shine. Then for the outside of the ring on the gold, I used my Dremel to round out the profile of the ring and give it kind of a domed finish. That way it's got kind of a more interesting reflection and it just has more of a traditional look in my opinion. And then from there, I use the exact same methods that I always do. I start with coarse sandpaper, work all the way up to a fine. And then for gold, it's a very standard metal polishing process. I just use my regular medium compound on my left buffing wheel. And then on my right buffing wheel, I use that green. And you can see gold takes such a fantastic polish. You can see we got it up to a complete mirror shine here. And so it's just beautiful. I always love seeing the way that gold turns out and it doesn't tarnish. So this is great. It'll stay like this as long as you keep it protected from scratches. And I grabbed this bottle here to show off the reflection on it. You can just see how it reflects literally everything. You can see all the little details in it. So it's just really cool. And gold's a great material to work with and something that really holds its finish. And that's what's so cool about gold. And that's why it's used in jewelry so much. It's just a really solid material that's gonna last a lifetime. So that's the video guys. I wanted to give you a big thank you for sticking through all the way to the end. This was such a fun project to work on and it was so great to be able to work with Matthias. I've actually been somewhat of a fan of his for a while now. So it was so cool to be able to see someone that I look up to shout out my work. I just thought that was amazing and I thought that was really awesome of him. It was something he didn't have to do and it was something that really benefited me and my whole community as a whole. So if you're someone who subscribed from watching Matthias, make sure to let me know in the comments. I wanna see you guys. It's always so fun seeing a comment. I get them to this day where Someone's like, hey, I just came for the Matthias video. I love your stuff. So I just think that's wonderful. And I think that Matthias did a really great, awesome thing here. So I wanted to do my best to try and return the favor. So I know I don't have as big of a channel as he does, but make sure to check him out. He's a really great creator. His content is all very entertaining, whether that's any of his high five content or his personal channel. He's just a really entertaining guy. He lives an interesting life and he obviously does cool stuff. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.